it's a big March fly trying to prevent me from doing some filming. Can you believe it is 2023 already? It's been a crazy few years with coronavirus. It's been two years since I've been living in the van full time and one year since I've had this YouTube channel. I am here at Cram's Farm Reserve in Dun Dun, New South Wales. This area is part of the Byron hinterland and it is absolutely beautiful here. This is a public space. It doesn't cost anything to come here and the gates open, I believe, at a 7 a.m. and close at around 6 p.m. at night time. You can't camp here, which is a shame, but it is to preserve the area. The waterway here is part of a dam system and, and I believe the dam wall is about four kilometers away. In this episode, I am going to show you a full van tour, all the things that I have done to it in the past, all the things I've now done to it again, and the reasons why I did those things. The things that worked, the things that didn't work, the things that fail or broke uh, will all be part of this episode. But before we get into that, let's go for a paddleboard on this water because it is super inviting and I just love paddleboarding, as you know. That's probably the way I should have went up through there, I think. Oh well. Well, well, well. <laughs> was it that way <laughs> or that way? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was that way. Yeah, must be that way. All right. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm lost. Well, it's either that way or that way. It'll get me to the same place. Yeah. <laughs> this looks familiar. Yeah, over that way. I knew I wasn't lost. This place is truly amazing. 
it's surrounded by so many mountains and when it catches the clouds and the clouds come in the temperature here drops at least 10 degrees all right paddle was completed but unfortunately i didn't make it to the dam wall i did in fact take a wrong turn and missed that area completely so first and foremost why did i buy a volkswagen crafter I wanted a brand new van and so the choices for me really came down to uh, either a Sprinter or a Crafter. Now Sprinters have been around for a long, long time. Volkswagen have only been making a big van like this since 2017 or 18, I think. Previously, Volkswagen had a contract with Mercedes and they were using their vans rebadged as Crafters. This is the first authentic Volkswagen Crafter which they started building in 2018. Now, when it came to making the decision between the Sprinter or the Crafter, it really came down to the price. And the price difference between those two products was $20,000. Now, is the Mercedes product $20,000 better? I don't think so. The other deciding factor is I've been purchasing Volkswagen vehicles for the last 10 years and to tell you the truth, I've had nothing go wrong with those vehicles whatsoever. So looking at the price of $20,000 difference and the Volkswagen product, or my experience with the Volkswagen product, the decision was really easy. Now the bad thing with the Crafter, because it's such a new product, and I knew this going in, that there would be a lack of aftermarket products for this vehicle. So when it comes to modifying, you either have to wait for the products to become available, or you make them yourself, or you find someone that can make them for you. That is especially true when it comes to suspension, lift kits, or GVM upgrades. At the time, I did some research, and basically you had three options. You could go with a body lift kit, you could go with the sequel suspension kit, or you could opt for a custom suspension kit. I was dead against the body lift kit, I was also against the Seekle lift kit because basically all you were getting were some front struts and just a block for the rear. I was lucky that I found a spring manufacturer in Moorbank, New South Wales who made new 18mm front springs and added some more leaves to my rear springs. Now that increased the height but it also increased the GVM. And after using it for the last six months, it has been absolutely great. Prior to getting those springs fitted, I was also researching interchanging the different suspension parts from the various crafter models. And it seemed to me at the time that it was very, very durable. You could take the leaf springs out of a five ton van and put it into a four motion van and that would give you a GVM upgrade and a lift as well. But I didn't go any further into that and I don't even know if it will actually work. But if you want to research it, then go ahead. It seems to me like it's very doable. The lift on Betty is about two inches and I've had no problems with it whatsoever. The only modification I've had to make is actually to drop the tail shaft center bearing down by about maybe 30 millimeters. When it comes to wheels and tires, I'm now running CSA steel rims that are designed for an AMROC at plus 35 offset. The Crafter has a plus 60 offset, so they do stick out a little bit, but it's not enough to worry about. The tires I run now are the Maxxis Razors all-terrains. I was previously running the Falcon Wild Peaks, but in my opinion, those are not a very good off-road tire. And the reason being is that the sidewall has a 45 degree angle on it. And when you let those tires down to go off-road, that sidewall becomes very exposed to the ground. And in my case, I ended up with two flat tires. The sidewalls in the Falcon Wild Peaks are only two ply, and I believe you need a, at least a three ply tire for off roading. Yeah, so in my opinion, steer clear of those Falcon Wild Peaks. They're just a shit tire with a wrong angle for off roading. And as you see now, I've got a couple more spares than I did originally. I don't think that one spare tire is enough for off roading. So now I have a total of three spare tires two on the back and one underneath. Now I had to make the spare wheel mounts by myself because there's generally nothing available in Australia to suit this vehicle. 
well at least nothing that locates on the hinges and I didn't want to drill any holes in the tailgate. Now custom making bits and pieces like this for me is quite easy. I see something that needs to be done and I just find a solution around it. First of all I found some bolts that would go into the standard hinge holes. And then from there it was just a simple task of cutting up pieces of metal and then welding it to the right sizes. And what I might do for you guys in the next episode or so is I'll produce a video showing you how I actually made these wheel mounts. Now we should talk about the elephant in the room. Yeah, that's right. If you haven't been paying attention, it's that big ass awning behind me. Now, originally I was running a two hour awning, an electric one that came off the side, but in high winds at Sandy Point in WA, that awning just flipped straight over the car and I had to get a new one. This is a 270 XT by the Bush Company. It is a very solid product, but very, very expensive as well. I think I paid about 2,600. But as you can see, it covers the whole side and some of the back, which is perfect. My old awning only did the side, and to tell you the truth, those awnings are not designed for any type of wind whatsoever. Mine started to have little tears in it, and ultimately, it folded over the top of the vehicle on a windy day. And that's a thousand dollars down the drain. Now fitting this awning to your vehicle isn't an easy job whatsoever and I wouldn't recommend it unless you've got some really good skills in fabrication. The thing that makes it very difficult to install is that the mount is behind the bag and you kind of have to know where those bolt mounts go before you cut holes in the bag. So there's a lot of putting it up, checking it, measuring, marking and then pulling it back down again and then making your holes and then mounting it up not easy whatsoever the awning is a little harder to put up as well just because it's at extra height with the van but it's up in two or three minutes regardless which isn't that hard anyway it might have something to do with i'm quite short my rv electrical system consists of two 100 amp hour lithium batteries a dc to dc charger two by 175 watt solar panels and an mppp charger the system is completely seamless. It runs my fridge and a 55 litre freezer at the same time. Now I've had no sunlight whatsoever. The system would run for three days before the batteries went flat. But given that we have sun and plenty of it, and if I park in the sun, then the system is completely off grid. From factory, the Volkswagen Crafter has zero recovery options. And that is pretty much why I made this bumper bar. Now, if you haven't seen that video where I've made this bumper bar, then I'll leave a link in the description so you can watch that video. I now have two recovery points. I also have two high lift jack points, a winch, and a couple of fog lights. Now you might well be asking, where is the high lift jack? I actually found a really good spot for it, which you wouldn't normally think about. This mounting location is absolutely perfect because it keeps the jack nice and secure and it is completely out of the weather and rain, which means it's gonna last a lot longer. Now onto the interior, as you can see, I have a Waco 55 liter fridge and this fridge doubles as a seat when I sit inside it. Uh, the fridge is packed as you can see but it holds all my nice yum goodies in there I also have a freezer which is in behind here so this is a 55 liter Dometic fridge or freezer you can just change the settings from a fridge or freezer by adjusting the temperature that one is running a freezer and this one is the older version of that product I believe you need a separate fridge and a freezer, and that's why I've got a lot set up like that. Before we step inside, to show you some things on the outside here, this is a switch panel for all this front kitchen section. I've got, also got a fill point for the 45 liter fresh water tank. Now the fresh tank is on that side, but I've got a pipe running from here all the way to that to fill that up. And then there's a pump in the bottom there which drives the, the sink automatically. Now that sink drains into a tank under here. In there. Um, that's also 45 liters. And when that gets full, I just drain it through 
this tap right here. And that hose, I use that hose to feed into here from fresh water, obviously. I've also got an axe, which is a little bit rusty. It's a couple years old, seen some wear and tear. Also with a little brush cutter, just for when you need to cut up firewood. Um, that comes really handy. A shovel, no explanation what that's for. The interior, we've got a table, which locks in there. And that, that table works well when you're sitting here. You can have your dinner here or do your work that you need to do. That tape works really well. I had to pack it away just to kind of pushing it in and then locking it for security so it doesn't fly open when you're driving. Um, directly underneath that we have a little pantry. Hold some of my canned goods. That works really well too. And that's secured, it's not gonna open and close while I'm driving. Now I set up the kitchen this way rather than against the wall here or here. It's because I actually like to look at and view the environment while I'm actually washing dishes or making something to eat. And it, I think it makes a lot of space this way too. So yeah, sink, which is really good. I've got a mirror there, which is essential for fixing yourself up. I didn't have that before that was all open but I put that board there and put a mirror on there and that works a great deal better I did also upgrade the curtains here some black curtains no light comes through that and that is on the, on an aluminium track which works really well on this side we have our blender can't live without that also our toaster and our spice rack um, that has some little spices that I use but for the big stuff or the stuff that I use mostly I've got some spices on this side here all the essential stuff overhead compartment for some fruit and veggies that don't go in the fridge now this bench here actually slides it's secured by one of these rubber little things I've got here. And you'll, you'll find that I've got those little rubber slings uh, fitted everywhere. So anything where there's a cupboard that opens and close, I've got them locked. And believe me, you need them because you can do lots of different things to keep the cupboards closed, but they'll still open. And um, I find that works really well. That doesn't look so bad, but they are, they are actually everywhere. And I've also got them on this side too, all locking in. Once they're locked in, they don't move. Back to this, this is, uh, this covers cooktop. It just slides over like that. If I didn't have it sliding like this, then I would have limited bench space. So essentially, I'm maximizing the space that I have. There's a cooler here. And a knife block. Now this is the knife block for my apartment. So pretty fancy, but I do like a good knife. These are Japanese knives, chef knives. Uh, again, I've got another curtain on this side here. So when that's open, I can just slide that across. And that is uh, some more privacy while I'm cooking. To slide that back, it's just simple by just push across. Once it's pushed across like that, just lock it in. Easy peasy. Next up, I've got a little seat that I use for when I've got a guest, I put that there and sit on it, and the guests can sit on here, or I take that outside and, and sit outside. The wardrobe, clothes going there, more clothes, and I use the bottom one for some tools and some um, some pantry stuff. The bed is a double bed. What I've done, I've actually cut off 100 millimeters off the bottom. So it's a double bed, but 100 mil shorter. 
behind you here I've got a 240 outlet that I use to charge my laptop when I'm working on the table here. And in here is all the charging station, device storage and uh, other stuff like my fishing tackle, arrows, that sort of gear. On this side here, I've got a little shelf, uh, a little phone charger up there and a little power outlet and just a little, it's a little bookshelf basically just to keep some stuff on. I do keep a torch here and a second headlamp with a red light on it. Now the ceiling is actually made up of really thin timber blinds or the same timber you would find in timber blinds. Very lightweight and easy to work with. When it comes to the cabin, the only thing I've really changed in here is I've added a UHF radio and I've made a place for a portable radio as well. And I think that's really important that you have a portable radio just so that if you go away from the van, you can communicate with the people in the van or if you're doing some recovery, then you need that for the people on the outside to give you instructions on the inside. But yeah, other than that, the cabin is standard. Oh, and also on the back here, I've got a fan and that fan comes in really handy at night time. Just blows air um, in conjunction with the window. So that window opens up and it has a fly screen on it, little fly screen, and the combination of the window and the fan is enough ventilation in here. I also have this fly screen mesh which rolls down and zips down, and so if I was out in the open somewhere, I could leave that door open and just roll this uh, mesh down so the bugs don't get in. Now moving on to the back of the van. There it is, quite busy. <laughs> it fits a lot of stuff. On this side, tow bar to fit there. Some recovery gear, very essential, probably not enough. I probably need some more, but I'll work on that a little bit later. Skateboard need that on this side here my bike and all the battery stuff in there um, water tank over the wheel well water pump which goes on to a shower head the shower head is broken uh, I haven't found one yet that I like but I still use that to wash off after getting out of the beach now you might see that I've got a jerry can here Originally, I did have the jerry can or two jerry cans on the outside here, but um, I was involved in an accident. I got re ended, and that holder got all bent up, and I haven't been able to buy the same one from the manufacturer. So I'll work on that in the next few weeks, and hopefully, I'll get that back on there because I do miss that. I don't like having the jerry can on the inside, there's no fuel there at the moment but it's the same thing, it just it rattles around. I'm not really happy about that. Yeah, in here, all my diving stuff, wetsuits, all that sort of gear, BCDs, all the regulators, all in there. On this side here, some dive stuff as well that I use. Um, this is a water pack for when I go on a paddleboard long distance. I like to paddle sometimes, you know, eight, 10, 16 kilometers. So I'll take that, uh, that has an e perb on it, in case I'm in the open ocean somewhere, uh, get in trouble, I just hit that button, someone will come and find me. Also got a float for, or a training float for free diving. So yeah, pretty busy there, but I use everything that's there. Now on this side, let's just hold this out for a second. Unlock it, push it out. that'll stay there. 
stay, stay. All right, now this section here, I used to have toolboxes that were mounted here and I found that the toolboxes were too heavy and I wasn't using all the tools all the time. Basically, my trip around Australia, the last one, I was just fixing other people's cars and I like to help, but carrying all that weight for nothing, I don't know. So what I've done is I've changed, I've changed that, that's what the toolboxes were. I've now made this an outdoor kitchen. All the cooking stuff is there. Uh, pots and pans in the drawer here. New cooktop from Coleman Peak One. Very well built. I did look at a few of them, and this one was probably the well, the best built one that I could find. Very sturdy. And then also here, I have a pull-out table. Now that table actually pulls all the way out so I can take that and put it onto a park bench somewhere and use it as a chopping board as well. But yeah, look at that, that's pretty good, huh? Right, I've got my spear gun, I use that often. Also got a compound bow. I used to hunt uh, 15 20 years ago that is from then I don't hunt anymore but I still um, enjoy target practice and so I've kept that on the roof I've got my paddleboard and a new surfboard that I bought um, underneath that is a deck a wooden deck so once these boards are off I can actually sit up here enjoy a beer on a sunset which is perfect also got my two solar panels which work work really well this one is smashed I had a rock thrown at it but that still works so that's still there don't have any ladders on the outside I don't want to make it easy for someone to climb up there if I need to get up there I simply just open the doors and just climb up putting my foot there foot there foot on the hinge and then I'm up yeah, I thought long and hard about a ladder but the more people I spoke to just said that you're making it easier for other people to climb up and um, while the, the boards aren't terribly expensive you know, I don't want to lose them so yeah no ladder on the outside for security reasons where I store my diving fins when I'm not using them just in there so as you can see it's quite packed with a lot of things in there but that's the way you got to do it you want to go and do a trip around somewhere you got to have all the things that you want to do and I've certainly done that I've got all the things that I like to do right here did I cover everything oh no I didn't there's a couple more things firstly the window I put it in a window on the side door that was quite easy I simply found the maximum size window that will go into that space then I made a spacer for it a wooden spacer and then just cut the hole out after I took some measurements really easy but what I'll do for you guys is I'll put a video together showing you exactly how I did that there's also been some changes to the interior of the vehicle I used to have the fishing rods fitted on the roof on a bracket that became a little inconvenient you were always brushing your head up against it and it made things difficult for getting in and out of the bed so what I did is I moved those fishing rods to a plastic plumber's conduit on the roof and then I mounted the, my recovery boards and the shovel on mounts back onto that plumber's conduit. Now that plumber's conduit, you can buy locking caps from KRS. I'll put the link in the description for that product. And here's that rain. Oh, wow. All right, the rain is here, so this is the end of the video. Thank you again, guys. Stay safe and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.